Do you think free will is a good thing or a bad thing? Do you think it's more godly for God to grant us free will and allow us to make our own decisions, choose the direction of our lives, or do you think that's bad and he should control that? Do you think that nature is good, or do you think nature should be controlled tighter by God and not allow bad things to happen in nature? There's a lot of atheists who don't believe in God because God didn't prevent things. So because God didn't prevent something bad from happening in their lives, God must not be true. Because what kind of God, and if there is a God, what kind of God would allow that to happen to them? And these are great questions. They are. <clears throat> if we take ourselves out of it for a moment and you just look at natural disasters, for example, Things that are out of our control, but why would God allow this to happen to us? Does an avalanche kill deer and bears and birds and trees? Yeah. Does an avalanche happen whether people are on earth or not? Yeah. Does an earthquake or a hurricane or a tsunami kill thousands of animals, destroy the reefs, destroy habitats? <coughs> yeah whether we're here or not. So when it happens to us, when something bad happens to us, people tend to take it personally. And when we take things personally and we get upset about it, we have to blame someone on why something bad is happening to us. We need to have a rationale or a reason. So we might blame it on God, or we say there is no such God because if there was, how would God allow that to happen to us in our lives? It's a really interesting like double speak because ultimately we want to have free will. We want to be independent. We want to be able to make our own decisions and guide the direction of our lives. But at the same time, when things don't go the way that we want based on the decisions that we've been making, we look for someone to blame. And one of the easiest scapegoats is blaming God because things didn't go the way they wanted to. And if God was real, things should be all be perfect in my life and go exactly how I want them to go. Because after all, like God's made me and, and I'm supposed to be happy. So this is a this is a very dangerous area to play in. And in my opinion, I think that we need to uh, own the direction of our lives, because the direction of our lives is based on decisions that we're making. And each decision that we make, cause and effect, drives and guides where our life turns. And things are going to happen that are out of our control because that's just natural law. That's just the world, that's nature. Go watch the Nature Channel, it's brutal. No one said life was going to be easy, right? And through this process, we still need to hold our faith because above all things, God wants us to prosper, right? But at the same time, there's work that's involved with us making the right decisions to take us on the, the path or, or through the course, right? Or in the direction that we set us up so that there's good things and blessings that are taking place and happening in our lives. It just doesn't happen without work. Right? We have to do good works. But even doing good works, bad things can still happen. And that's where our faith kind of guides our perspective or our outlook on how those things that are bad, that are out of our control happening in our lives, how do we handle them? How do we rebuild from them? What kind of decisions do we make coming off those? As a father, you know, they're, again, going back to the prevention. So people get mad because God didn't prevent a bad thing from happening in our lives. And how could you let that happen to me if you truly are a loving God? As a father, there might be things that you tell your kids and you give them the roadmap. We've been given the roadmap of how to have a successful life, how to have a successful humanity, how we can live together in peace. But we just can't do it because we're a bunch of jerk offs and assholes. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you got 10 rules, don't screw those up and you're going to have a good life. Okay, and we still screw them up. Me too, right? So with that, you know, and it's, I always laugh because the one dude's asking Jesus of, you know, 
tell me about heaven, right? And Jesus is like, dude, you guys can't understand earthly things, let alone heavenly things. Like, dude, your head's going to pop. That's not an exact quote, but it's basically how I interpret it. Like, dude, I gave you guys 10 rules and you guys can't even get that right. And you want to learn, you want to know about heaven. You can't even understand how the dynamics of this world works. Come on, dude. You know, but sorry, tangent. <clears throat> but as a father, you try to give guidance to your kids, right? I remember my dad telling me things to do. Hey, Rich, this is the best way to do it. Trust me, I've been there before. If you do it like this, it'll work the best. If you don't, this, this, and this could happen. And I'm like a rebellious teenager, or early 20s. Like I don't have perspective yet. You know, I don't have all the ex life experiences. I think I know better because I'm an idiot teenager. So I'm just going to go do my own decision anyway, even though my dad told me, right? And then, holy crap, it goes exactly how my dad said. The thing's a failure or a flop or whatever, and you sit back and you go, man, I should have listened. So at that point in time, which one's the right way to respond? Dad, I know you told me, but you didn't prevent me from doing it. You could have prevented this from happening. Or I go, wow, my dad told me I shouldn't do that, but I did it anyway, and this is what happened. Whose fault is it? You know what I mean? It's important for us as adults as individuals to own the, the, the response or the outcome of the decisions that we make. If we turn and try to cast blame on everyone else for our situations and our predicaments and all that kind of stuff, then what happens is we lose control over the, the course or the direction of our life because we're too busy blaming it on everyone else. Instead of turning it internal and basically going, what did I decide to do? What were the decisions that I made that caused this chain of events to happen? How do I learn from this? How do I take that information and make sure that I don't let that repeat? Whether I was in the right or the wrong, it doesn't matter. What, exp what things took place what did I do and how could I do that differently next time to get a different outcome in my life? Because if I keep doing wrong decisions and having wrong think, I'm going to continue to get wrong results. And by blaming God or other people in my life, it's never going to fix it. That's why a lot of times we see people who are on the wrong track. They finally hit rock bottom and they have no other recourse. They can't blame anyone else. And now they start to rebuild in their faith or whatever because they're out of options, right? We don't have to get to that point to change course or to own the decisions and the results in our life so that we, we can have a better outcome. We can have better relationships. We can have better experiences and we can have a better relationship with God or whatever, right? Um, by owning and reflecting and understanding and making different decisions, but... I just find it very interesting that there's a, a big push for blaming God for not intervening in disasters. And in many cases, it's just the way the world works. And if we're people of free will, there's going to be disasters because there's a lot of bad people. But at the same time, who are who are lost, they're, they're, they're not of God. The people who are, you know murders that happen, you know, these random attacks that we're seeing around the country of people just like walking down the street and then shooting someone or stabbing someone or beating someone up, these random acts of hate. Is that God's working? If we're, if we're going to be so quick to blame that on God, how come we're not even ex acknowledging the fact that that person has separated themselves from God and they've most likely been manipulated or joined sides, whether they know it or not, with the devil and they're acting on the devil's terms, not God's terms. There's nowhere in there that I can find where Jesus says, go attack random people and beat them and stab them. You know what I mean? So if we're going to be that quick to blame that on God, maybe we need to have a little bit of reflection time and going, well, is, or is that the works of God or is that the works of Satan? If we're going to bring the spiritual aspect into this, you know what I mean? So again, Kind of going long-winded, so I'll, I'll wrap it up. But 
I think you get where I'm going with this as far as if we want free will, if we want to acknowledge that free will, right, then we have to own the results of the decisions that we make. And we shouldn't be looking to people on the outside or God or whatever to blame the things that are happening in our lives, right, that are based off the decisions that we're making. Things that are out of our control, how do we respond to those? Who is giving us the best wisdom and advice on how to rebuild after disaster? Who's giving us the best guidance and love on how to manage things that are not going our way, right? And there's there's two main answers to that, and you can decide which course of action is correct and which one's more beneficial for you. So